Hello, welcome to the Laser Cutter Workshop at the Integrated Teaching and Learning Laboratory. My name is Anne and I'm an engineer here at the ITL program. Today we're going to learn about prototyping using an Epilog Mini Laser Cutter. Laser cutters are a great way to prototype. We have two full-size laser cutters and two mini laser cutters that are all available for student use in the building. There are other tools available in the building for students to use as well. We have 3D printers, a sticker plotter, a vacuum form machine, and a whole manufacturing center at the ITLL. When you start your design process, you should consider what questions the prototype will be able to answer for you. That will help you to select the best direction. Laser cutters are great for flat things, especially boxes. You can find materials at low cost or even free as a way to iterate on the design of an enclosure. Laser cutters are not ideal for intricate 3D models. Those are best done with a 3D printer. They're also not good for materials such as metal and most plastics, as the fumes can be toxic or flammable. Acrylic is the best material for laser cutting. Thick materials are another no-go on the laser cutters, as the cutting will not be as precise. Large, flat, and especially thin surfaces are the very best to laser cut. We have four laser cutters in the ITLL that are student-run. The operation is very similar for all. In our next section, we'll take a look at each of the components on the mini laser cutter. In addition to getting familiar with the machines, we'll also practice with making a digital laser cutter file which materials should and should not be used with the particular laser cutters, and how to adjust the settings based on your material. We'll next cover the laser cutter process. Our first step is a model that we want to laser cut. For example, something that we created in CAD. We'll discuss additional places to find models to laser cut in the next section. Once we have a model, we then want to convert it to a file type that the laser cutter can read. We do this in a program called CorelDRAW, our final step is to send that file to the laser cutter and start the machine. Let's take a moment now to get to know each of the machine components. The keypad on the laser cutter is the control panel for the machine. A few example keypad operations are to access your job and start and stop the laser. Here is the vector cutting grid, which allows us to cut through a variety of materials. We can remove this grid for engraving and replace it with another. There are two rulers which help us to align our material within the cutting area. We can also use these to tape down material. This is the I-beam. It is initially parked out of the way so that we can add or remove material. We can also see the lens assembly that is carried back and forth on the I-beam. The lens assembly contains the mirrors, lens, autofocus, and air assist tube. The optic system consists of a mirror that reflects the laser beam down through the focal lens. The air assist tube projects a constant stream of compressed air along the cutting surface, which reduces flame and charring while cutting through materials. This is powered by an air compressor in the back of the machine. The spring-based focal gauge can be used to bring your material to the correct height automatically. There are also four exhaust fans in the back, which suck out dust and smoke from engraving and cutting. The mini laser cutters sit atop a BOFA fume system, which is where the vents exhaust to. The large laser cutters are vented to a separate fume system. On the back left side of the machines is where the power switch is to turn the machine on and off. We'll go through turning the machine on and off, turning the compressor on, and turning the BOFA system on for the minis in the next section. There are some materials that are good for our laser cutters and some that should not be used. For the large laser cutters, it's best to use acrylic. You can also use cardboard, fabric, and thin craft wood. The materials should not be greater than 1 4th inch thickness, and craft wood should be no greater than 1 8 inch. Do not use polycarbonate, any other plastic you do not know to be acrylic, metal, or plywood. Most plastics produce toxic fumes when cut by the laser, and metals act as a heat sink. Can you think of why plywood should not be cut using the laser cutter? It's actually because plywood is layers of wood glued together. The glue fumes are toxic when cut by the laser cutter. 
When in doubt about using any material, please ask an ITLL engineer. As with the large laser cutters, there are some materials that are good to use with the mini laser cutters. When cutting with the mini laser cutters, it's best to use acrylic. You can also use cardboard. Like the larger laser cutters, the materials should not be greater than 1 4 inch thickness. Do not use any other material with the minis. When in doubt about using cardboard or acrylic with the mini laser cutters, ask an ITLL engineer.